Okay, guys, we are live. Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Live from the Sword Coast podcast. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly dungeon master this evening. Tonight, we are, um, it says in the intro, the description of the video currently that we're playing Pathfinder, but tonight we're going to take a bit of a detour and go far to the east, to the land of the Emerald Empire, to Rokugan, and we're going to be playing... Ugh. A little bit of Legend of the Five Rings role playing. Uh, so this is at the time of recording the brand new version of uh, the Legend of the Five Rings role playing game published by Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, we are going to be taking this out for a spin tonight, playing through the be uh, the adventure included in the beginner box. Uh, so if you intend to play. Uh, to play the uh, beginner box, this video will include uh, spoilers for the adventure that's in there. So just proceed with caution. Um, with me tonight are two of my very accommodating players mm -hmm. and stars of the Wednesday night session. They only learned we're playing this <laughs> about two minutes ago. So this is how important it is for a DM to have really uh, supportive and accommodating players. The stars tonight will be first up, Dave. Uh, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Dave uh, at David J Forte on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll be playing uh, Akoto Asako uh, of the uh, Lion Clan. And I have no idea what she does or what she yeah. can do, but we are going to have some fun tonight. <laughs> uh, and we also have uh, Steve O. Hello, I'm back. I'm Steve O. And uh, I will randomly pick one of the characters uh, that I'm just looking at for the first time. And I like the sound of uh, Isawa Aki. Is Isawa Aki. Very cool. Isawa okay. Aki, that's the one. Okay. She looks cool. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, George uh, Flowers, one of our regular uh, viewers who uh, shows up for the session and who will be running champions for me in the uh, near future. Um, George has asked, what are you guys drinking tonight? Um, Steve. Just tea? <laughs> tea. Jeff didn't make it tonight, so it's very uh, low key. Uh, we've got some uh, eggnog and Grand Marnier in the skull mug because it's oh. still almost Halloween. Thrilling, Steve O. What's your beverage Pabs, of choice? Pabs five point nine percent. <laughs> even cheaper than the four point five. <laughs> and I am truly living large on my water and lemon juice. So. <laughs> Your level will thank you later. Yeah, yeah. All right. So um, let's see here. Steve, you've played some Five Rings before, right, with um, the card game. But I, mm -hmm. I don't have, not sure. Have we ever played the role playing game before? I, you know, I, we, yeah, I think we talked about it and danced around it. Maybe we even played around with it a bit, but we didn't actually play a full game or anything. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the. Older, to give you context for sort of where, um, so I'm getting weird, I'm getting weird uh, echo from my headphones here. One sec, I'm just going to make sure I'm using the right mic here. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Okay, so the um, the sort of byline for uh, Legend of Five Rings in general for the setting is that it's a, um, a, a place where uh, honor is stronger than steel effectively like it's it's kind of like a fantasy um fantasy samurai era japanese type fantasy setting uh so within that setting they have different clans and the mm -hmm. each of you are from different uh from a different clan uh iswa aki is from the phoenix clan what i'd suggest is so there is if you guys have opened up the pdf set your pdf viewer to display two pages because the thing is designed to be kind of mm. laid out like this. Are we able to sort that out? Okay, so, and uh, what we're gonna do is rather than me go on at length uh, to, to go on about this, let's just dive into the adventure and we will learn as we go. So <laughs> first, let's talk about the 
intro. So each of you guys should see inside the PDF booklet, the second page, there's a thing at the top that says, Welcome to the Emerald Empire. Do you see that? Yes. So I'll read that sh uh, sh uh, shtick just to get the scene going here. This is an era of sudden change and upheaval in Rokugan, where the Emerald Empire has ruled for over a thousand years. Mortal schemes, natural calamities, and celestial turmoil alike have disrupted the political, military, and spiritual equilibrium of the land. Long simmering rivalries and fresh betrayals ripple through the courts on the battlefield. The chrysanthemum throne is beset by threats from without and within, and the honor of the seven great clans, the families descended from the heroes of legend and sworn to rule their lands in the emperor's name, shall be put to the test. Now, why don't you guys each take a look at um, the next paragraph down that talks about your clan. And uh, why don't we go in turns, guys, and you can tell us about your clan. So, Dave, why don't you tell us about the Lion Clan? Okay. Uh, the Lion Clan is war itself, forged by the Kami Akodo to crush the Emperor's foes. So, <laughs> suddenly talking like uh, the old man from Mako or whatever from Conan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a the wizard, Lion mind clan. you. Lion Clan is war upon itself. Forged by the Kami Akado to crush the Emperor's foe. That's great. <laughs> I don't want to uh, scare off any uh, aged viewers, so I'll go back to my normal voice. <laughs> we not only live and breathe Bushido, but also exemplify it to others. Uh, our roar heralds the call to battle and honor. For centuries, we have forged the military tactics and strategy of the Empire. Now, our samurai seek to apply the wisdom of their ancestors trials of the modern era the lion clan culture lives and breathes martial achievement and glory even those of us who are not warriors will often couch their achievements in martial terms that glorify combat as the highest of arts so the lion clan is effectively the preeminent warrior clan if you were to think of active you know not duelists but act, like on the battlefield fighting a traditional war the lion are arguably the most powerful clan for that now steve why don't you tell us about your clan the phoenix clan the phoenix clan other clans guard the empire's borders even the empire's future but the phoenix guard the empire's soul it is our duty to keep safe the myriad religious paths defining them and arbitrating their differences scholars of the Tao and servants of the spirits are found among our ranks more than in any other clan the wisdom we have gleaned from both traditions has led us to foster peace and understanding among our other clans, even if it means sacrificing ourselves in the process. We know that our every step sends ripples throughout the world, so we must tread lightly and with a peaceful heart, lest disharmony or even chaos result. Interesting. So, now, each when you're making a character in this, uh, you pick your clan, you pick your family, and because each of the different clans is made up of different families and you also pick your school this is where you have trained now you see uh you may wonder why your two characters look so young and that is because you guys have not yet gone through your gempuku ceremony the gempuku ceremony is or gempeku gempeku ceremony gempeku gempuku i can't remember hold on um, it's the coming of age ceremony so right now mm -hmm. you guys are not actually recognized as adults but uh when We'll, we'll go through the introduction here. Uh, you will see what um, uh, what brings you guys to Suma Village. But let's talk about your schools. So Dave, why don't you tell us about your school? Okay. Um, my school is um, schools in Rokugan train and prepare us for our role as samurai, such as Bushi warriors and Shugenja, Shugenja. Pri Shugenja uh, priests who can often call upon the spirits for aid, and courtiers, uh, those skilled in political matters, and finally monks, seekers of enlightenment. Uh, the Akoto War College curriculum for commanders is focused on control of one's weapons, of the battlefield, of the flow of conflict, and ultimately over oneself. Here at the Castle of the Swift Sword, we study the advice of leadership 
the last word of the art of war. In addition to training as warriors, we are educated to be leaders on the field of battle. We often treat war as a game of go, to be determined by exact moves. We strike precisely and without hesitation, whether using a sword or commanding a unit. Our goal is to minimize losses while achieving our objectives, the pinnacle of the art of war. Okay, and Steve, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Isawa Elementalist School, and you can just start with the second paragraph. Okay. As one of the oldest and greatest Shigenja families in the empire, we have had centuries to learn to commune with the spirits and the most effective ways to request their blessings. Some might confuse authority with arrogance, but at heart, we here at Isawa uh, Elemental Academies are a pious and dutiful family that is devoted to ensuring harmony and balance. Nice. Now, the Code of Bushido is obviously something that um, hangs over the, the expectations of someone who was born into the samurai caste. Uh, the way of the warrior or Bushido elevates samurai from the rest of society while also chaining us to near unattainable goals. When you become a samurai, you must embody righteousness and honor, loyalty and duty, courtesy and compassion, as well as courage in the face of death. You will be expected to uphold these virtues in your every word and deed, even when these ideals conflict with one another. The tenets of Bushido would not be ideals to strive towards after all, if they were easy to achieve. And then each of you guys, your clans value one of those seven uh, virtues above all others. Dave, why don't you tell us which uh, the Lion Clan uh, places prominence on? Uh, the tenant or yes, the wise words from the sensei? Uh, the tenant. The, the tenant for the Lion Clan is uh, honor is of deep importance to you as it is the center of your clan's view of the Bushido, especially in the context of martial virtue. And Steve, how about the uh, Phoenix? Uh, where am I looking for that? Uh, uh, under the Code of Bushido, second paragraph. Wise words from my sensei? No. Nope. The, uh, uh, the tenet of righteousness drives you as we Phoenix are willing to sacrifice ourselves to ensure the right thing is done. We know that uh, when our lands are not governed justly, the heavens will voice their displeasure. Mm-hmm. So the wise words from your sensei is the same for both of you guys. I'm just going to go through that. Um, honor and glory are everything to the samurai. Honor reflects your inward opinion of how well you adhere to the tenets of Bushido, while glory reflects how well you how well known your name is throughout the empire. A per, in a perfect world, you could bring glory to yourself and the phoenix or the lion, uh, and while maintaining your moral integrity. But in Rokugan we are frequently tested to see which one we value more. Know that your life as a samurai will often feature much turmoil over competing desires, especially over what you personally want, your nino, and what society, your clan, and your lord expects of you, your giri. And what that is, guys, is actually a mechanic in the game. It's a storytelling mechanic. And you're, you'll see that on the... Uh, what is it? Two. Well, the the inside of your character sheet here, there is one that says your personal turmoil. Do you see that? No. If you've got it set out in oh. the the two page mm -hmm. display, it'll be on the bottom uh, right. Much turmoil of a competing, especially for what you personally want in your Nino and what society you're playing. Not in that section, Steve. This is what it'll look like. Show me? Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's right down here where my finger is. Okay. Dave, do you have yours? I'm just still scrolling. It's a uh, drawing every time I scroll, so. Oh, okay. Okay, my personal turmoil. Um, I desire personal glory. Better to ensure the clan's role in Rokugan, but you know, as a lion, there is no greater role than to serve on the battlefield where there may be little recognition. So hmm. the tension for your character, as I take it, is that she wants glory for herself, but she knows that um, you can't fight alone on the battlefield. Right. And, and the Steve, battlefield might not give you all the glory you want. Right. And Steve, what is your personal turmoil? My personal turmoil is that I am aware of my power and I want to gain even more. My expert researches, res researches have gained attention, though, which may mean I am interested uh, instead 
uh, which means I am instead destined to be only a scholar and never wield real power. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, um, going back to that uh, first, uh, uh, first two pages there. So this is the same for both of you guys. Um, you're part of a role-playing game. An exciting cooperative storytelling experience. <laughs> I think you guys, have you guys played an RPG before? Uh, it's been a while. I don't know. Like, like, so like many games, two. this has rules, <laughs> components, and dice to help describe and resolve the action. Unlike many games, an RPG has no winner or loser. That's not true. Tell that to Sir Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man if everyone has fun then everyone wins uh blah blah, blah 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 your story thus far so this is the same for both of you guys the recent untimely and mysterious death of the emerald champion doji satsumi of the crane clan has thrown the emerald empire into turmoil each of the great clans suspiciously eyes the others and wonders whether the death was no tragic accident, but a dishonorable act of murder. It's impossible to not say murder like murder. In these times of strife, a group of youths approaches the village of Suma for the Topaz Championship and their Genpuku, the coming-of-age ceremony that will mark them as fully-fledged samurai. Each contestant has come from a different clan, and dreams of being the highest scoring contestant in the tournament, earning the title of Topaz Champion. Despite being pitted against one another, they are all united in their desire to succeed and bring honor to their clan and family. Not everyone in Suma has honorable motives in the contest, however. Personal vendettas, supernatural visitations, and deadly sabotage may undermine the following days, unless the new arrivals stay true to the code of Bushido and act as the honorable samurai they seek to become. So going back to that third page, guys, you will see that as you travel to Suma from, and then it'll be different destination for each of you guys, there is some backstory or some um, introductory stuff that's there. Uh, we'll do it reverse order. Steve, do you have that? It says, as you travel to Suma from the Isawa Elemental Academies. Yes. Go ahead. I yeah, You know that Isawa Ranma, uh, Ranmaru, my mentor's husband, blames me for her death. He may be correct. Uh, I am certain my parents are, are very proud of me, uh, though I have not seen them for some years now. Everything I have studied makes me believe that the magic used by the Unicorn Clan is heretical and should be outlawed. Similarly, the religious beliefs of the perfect land sect are aberrant and possibly even more dangerous to Rokugan. Mm. Hmm. And what about um, Okoto Basako? Uh, as you travel from Usuma from the Castle of the Swift Sword, you cannot stop thinking about your treacherous brother, Okoto Kiruhag. Kiruhage. Ki Kiruhage? Yeah. He cheated in your recent competition with him, and you cannot forgive such a dishonor to your family and to your clan. You know your parents expect great things from you, and that your sensei is proud of your skill. I firmly believe that the Crane clan are cowards with little honor. You must prove the lion better than them, especially in the upcoming Kipuku contests. So, I'll get you guys to turn to these pages been trying to which pages okay yeah so you might want to um just quickly download the the pdf as well too so it's not displaying in the browser right uh, but once you get these two pages displayed that's really all you'll need for the rest of the session okay except that it's pairing up page three and page four down. oh is it yeah motherfuckers yeah so i'm trying to and a way to break that, but it's not working. I might have to open no, up two versions. The, the one that's probably most important is this one for now. The one that has the rings and the skills and stuff like that on it. Yes. Okay. So let's raise the uh, tournament with 
a little box text because who doesn't love some box text in pre-gen adventures? The Topaz Championship. It is the 20th year of the reign of the Divine Emperor Hante the 38th. The Emerald Empire has stood for a thousand years, thanks to the guidance of the Kami and the wise benevolence of the Hante Emperors. Each of the seven great clans vies eternally to be the first in the Emperor's favor while safeguarding Rokugan from its many enemies within and without. The Topaz Championship is a chance for each clan to test their best and brightest against one another. Though all contestants can pass the tests and become samurai, the winner claims glory for themselves and their clan, and may even earn a high-ranking position in the Empire. As contestants, you are traveling to the village of Suma, where the championship will be held at the Kakita Dueling Academy. Who knows? Maybe you will win it all and become the Topaz champion. So, you guys have been traveling, uh, not together. Uh, you are from the, uh, respectively, the Phoenix Clan and the Lion Clan. The Lion Clan actually uh, borders on the Crane Lands, the Kakita Dueling Academy is one of the most important, likely the most um, prestigious dueling academy for Iejetsu dueling in all of Rokugan. The lion borders uh, uh, align with the uh, crane in most cases, so it has not been a very far distance for you to travel as uh, a lion samurai. The phoenix are quite a bit further to the north and east, partially on the, on the uh, coast. So it probably has been a much more, uh, much longer trip for, uh, for you, Aki. Um, incidentally, I will point out to the, like in traditional Japanese names, your family name goes first, your uh, given name is second. So Isawa is your family name, Aki is your given name, Okodo is your family name, and Masako is your uh, given. You guys have been uh, met up along the way. You found that you were both headed for Suma Village uh, for the Kikita Dueling Academy and to, to compete in the um, Topaz Championship. The rivalry between, over the thousand years of the Empire, there have been instances where there have been conflicts between the Phoenix and the Lion, but for the most part, they're not really at each other's, they're not um, at each other's throats, in particular in the way the Crane and the Lion are or to the degree, to be honest, the lion kind of are a problem for most people. <laughs> so um, the lion often finds itself at war with everyone, but it, it just so happens that they're arguably the best at it. So, you know. Humor us. Yeah. Yeah. So as you guys are, uh, despite coming from different clans, since meeting each other, you have been traveling together on the road, occasionally encountering other travelers and peasants transporting their goods. And you now see the village of Suma just ahead through the blossoming trees. Soon, you'll have arrived and you can rest yourself before the contest begins tomorrow. So tell me a little bit about what your, you know, kind of what, what, what have you guys been uh, chatting about as you've been making your way down towards through the crane lands. Now to give you context for the difference of where you came from, the lion lands are mostly wide open areas full of um, agriculture and most things in the lion lands are bent towards servicing war. Like it just so happens that the massive wide open lands are really handy for moving giant armies across. <laughs> so that's sort of what you would have experienced. The Phoenix lands are full of very primordial, not primordial, but very um, untouched and beautiful groves of trees and uh, mountains, not as, as big as the mountains at the north. Uh, the, I think it's the spine of the world, which is like in every fucking fantasy setting, but the spine of the world mountains in the north edge of uh, Rokugan, where the dragon uh, clan uh, finds its homes. But the Phoenix are kind of like, if you think of the the most important like Shinto shrines in uh, Japan, that's kind of what most Phoenix lands would be like because they have such a close connection with the kami, the, the spirits, the nature spirits that inhabit the world. Um, what you guys are finding is in the crane lands, the crane lands are much more 
artfully decorated. Uh, you likely find, Steve, that these the crane lands are beautiful, but it is not a natural beauty. It is a cultivated beauty. It's the difference between a you know a gorgeous wild rose and a carefully cultivated bonsai tree. Mm -hmm. uh, for you, uh, Dave, the lion lands or the crane lands likely seem fragile. They're you know they're where lion castles and fortifications and and buildings are built with a martial intent these ones clearly are built for artistry and for beauty and precision and they could be knocked down with three stones that's if the crane were not hiding behind duels they tend to use courtly from the lion perspective uh, courtly tricks and techniques to prevent themselves from ever getting to war where the Lion are the martial armies of the empire. The crane are the master courtiers, and they have the uh, their they have certainly the ear of the emperor, which means they where the lion dominate the battlefield. The crane dominate the courts. So as you're walking down the road uh, beside the Tangu River, you find your way blocked by a cart that's been upended on the road ahead. Uh, to your right, the river laps up against the edge of the path. And to your left, there's an artfully crafted stone wall that blocks off a broad and flooded field of rice. There's no way to proceed uh, without either getting wet or setting the cart to rights, pushing the thing up. An elderly peasant is struggling to do just that as you approach. But when he notices you, he hurls himself to the road at your feet, his forehead pressed to the uh, dust. Honored samurai, he cries. A thousand pardons for blocking your path. I will move the cart directly. Uh, you could wait, but compassion is a virtue of a samurai. Besides, he might know something useful about the village or the championship. So what this guy wants to, is going to do, he goes uh, scrambling over and he's trying to, to you know, pick up this cart and it's clear that this old guy is having some difficulty moving this thing. Um, he does not have any, he is a peasant and he does not have the mon, the, the crest of a clan uh, or of a family uh, on him. That like you guys, your kimono and your, your traveling robes, they likely have your one that likely they would have at the least your clan mon on it and uh, likely your, um, uh, what do you call it? Your, family mon as well what do you guys want to do what you can do is uh you could try and make your way um you know through the river and get yourself wet but you're going to arrive at the village likely a little drenched and possibly a little muddy you could try and make your way up and over the stone wall uh, but likewise that's likely going to get you a, a little wet and muddy or you can try and help this this old guy try and push this uh cart up now in terms of station peasants who are not uh, samurai, like samurai in Rokugan are way above. This is not a matter of like, boy, I'm going to get favorable treatment. Like if a peasant looks at you funny, you can kill them. Whether they're a member of your clan or not, there may be consequences, but it's the same consequences that would come of like someone damaging your property. It, the As far as the c celestial hierarchy is con concerned, um, this person is well beneath you the, in the order of heaven. Mm -hmm. So you're certainly not obliged to help the um, Sam or the uh, peasants, but what do you guys want to do? Uh, but compassion is important and perhaps some good karma heading into the event would be beneficial. I will, okay. I will help. Let's okay. say you. Well, I will uh, follow you. I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat indifferent, but uh, you know the the spirits always look upon all living beings equally. So, uh, uh, sure, I'll give you a hand. Okay, very good, Aki. So I don't know what we have for equipment. Or can we just lean into it, give it a good push? So yeah, uh, it's. Uh, let me see here. So only just to get some uh, dice rolling. Uh, for this, do you guys either have the dice app open? Actually, there's no either. <laughs> I do. Uh, you, have, you have to download it and install it from Dropbox. Oh, okay. 
Is that with that link that you gave us? Oh, is that how? Yeah, sorry, I haven't. I've got the the app app. So you got the app, All right? Um, so I, I couldn't get it to work. I, it's not it's not downloading for me for some reason. Uh, well, it's okay. So what I'll do um, is I will roll. Uh, yeah, you can roll for us. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. So what we're gonna do then is, uh, so Masako, you said you were gonna help. Yes. Okay. So I think here's what you do is you take a look at your ring. Uh, what, so here's what you do. You take. Sorry, I'm doing this backwards. So one change that's been made to this um, game from earlier games. The earlier versions of this always used dice pools. So you took your ring or an attribute and you added a skill just like a lot of other games. Um, you do that in here as well. Uh, and there's two kinds of dice you have. You have, and I don't know the names of these because I, I don't fucking care. There's, uh, oh, I do know. Th these are the um, ring dice and these are the skill dice. One of the ways this differs from Fantasy Flight Star Wars is there's only two kinds of dice. So it's a much more okay. streamlined game in that sense. Um, what you're going to do is decide on an approach. So your approach is dictated by what air you what uh, what air what ring you want to use. So if you want to be steady, grounded, and thorough, you would use earth. If you want to be direct and ferocious or inventive, you're using fire. If you're using uh, grace or cunning or precision, you'd be using air. So um, and the approach you determine is really help to helps to for us to narrate what the results are going to be as well so how do you think i'm gonna i, I think that the skill is fitness which is to perform a physical feat of prowess which means you're going to get one skill dice but what's your approach uh, if you want me to play this character as written in the email as a hot-headed warrior woman uh, i could definitely try that Okay. Uh, I think I would go with um, direct, ferocious, and inventive, even though it's my worst skill. Your worst let's thing, go, okay. Let's go with firing. Okay. It, this old man is in the way. He's putting us in a position to, is that three? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I've got one of your skill dice, one of your, uh, abil your ring dice, and I'll hit roll. Roll it, baby, roll it. Okay. Now, this game is also a roll and keep system, which means that mm. you roll a number of dice, you know, the total, and then you keep a number of dice equal to the ring. So in your case, you get to choose which ones. That's why it's important to see the dice. You got the same thing. Now, there are three different, uh, sorry, four different potential results you can get. This result is advantage. This result is a success. Let me get this to go. Come on. Yep. Okay. That's a success. That is an exploding success. That means you get to, if you select that as your dice, you get to roll another dice of the same type and add that to your results. Mm. And the final result is, see a little fire that's there? Yep. That is it's strife. What strife strange. is, is building emotional pressure. So uh. what strife is, one of the cool things that's different about this version of the game than any other version of, of the things is it actually gives you incentives to role play the whole samurai drama thing. It makes it a fun gamified thing rather than just being a penalty of like, I <laughs> can't do that because you're samurai. <laughs> can't do that because you're samurai. Which is, I think, an interesting change. However, your result was only one advantage, which means you did not succeed. So what do you think it looks uh, like as she's straining and putting her, her fury into this thing? Uh, she probably put too much energy into her emotions and not enough into being a calm samurai. And because of that, she hand slips off the side of the wagon and she can't get her... She's cursing. I'm not too. Okay. I can just kind of shakes a little bit and doesn't actually flip so because you rolled an advantage just like in both of you guys have played the star wars uh, fantasy flight game before just like in star wars or in genesis you get advantage and you can spend that so even though you failed you do get um an advantage from it so what you could do is you could um 
perform the task. Uh, okay, we well, didn't succeed, so you can't do that. You could determine the easiest way to accomplish the task, which I think would give you an advantage, which I will say you allows you to re-roll up to two dice. Actually, speaking of advantage, I think what do you guys have? Does he have any does he have any wooden poles in the in the back of the wagon, maybe that we could use to prop and you know pry the wagon over? Uh, okay, that, so actually interesting. So perhaps that would be easier. You take a look at the wagon and Sorry, there was something. Sorry. So what happens actually is you you sort of move this thing up, and it moves up just a tiny bit, and you it it, you, it slips from your hand and boom, hits the ground. But then this piece of paper, um, fall you know uh, drifts out. And kind of is picked up by the wind and pff, hits you in, in the face and you kind of, ah, you know, grab this thing. And as you snatch the paper away, you notice the writing on it. And the writing is, you have often told me you are a better father to my children than I am. I can only hope the fortunes bless you or curse you with children of your own one day that you could see the true challenges of fatherhood. And it appears to be addressed to the writer's brother-in-law, whose name is Kikita Toshimoko. Now, um, Steve, what are you doing during this? I, I'm watching to see what he's done, and I can see that uh, his most recent attempt did not... Uh... Did not work, so I can sort of see his mistake. Maybe I learned uh, from his advantage. Uh, sure. I also use fire, fire I'm good at, and it makes sense that when you're trying to move something, that you sort of, you know, put a little elbow grease into it. Okay. So, so here's, guys, one thing I want to point out is that each of you has an advantage. Uh, it's listed on page, I think, four of your uh, document. Uh, Aki, your advantage is six cents. Uh, you are especially in tune with the spirit world and are especially sensitive to mystical phenomenon. So when your advantage uh, is, and actually I'll, I'll tell you what yours is, Dave. So yours is indomitable will. Though nobody mm. is without fear, your will is strong and cannot be easily overcome. Mm. The cool thing with the advantages is if, uh, if you can, they're sort of a very loose narrative thing. If you can think of a way that that would apply to the story, then you can re-roll up to two dice of your choice when your advantage would play. Make sense? Okay. So, so indomitable will. Yeah. As in, so, I will not be defeated by this damn wagon and have to traipse anyways through the <laughs> water and muck any, after failing, I will be successful. Yeah. Yeah. Here, let me, uh, that sounds uh, credible to me. So let's uh, let's re-roll your dice. Oop, here we go. Boom. Oh, nice. Ooh. Oh. nice app. So you succeeded, but you gained one strife. Yes. Well, that's probably from losing my temper in the first place. I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Should have kept my calm. So your strife goes against you see where on your uh character sheet there it lists your composure it's next to your rings yes composure of 12. so that means you got a long way to go before you lose your your shit because you can That's... gain 12 strife before you uh before you so basically here's the way it works is that once you have more strife than your composure, you can no longer use dice that end up with a result with strife on it. Ah. But what you can do, there's different ways you can 
uh, reduce it in a like combat or action scene. You can choose, uh, you can uh, take your turn to just focus and then you reduce your strife by one or you can, um, you can unmask. So one thing that's very important in Rokugani society is the idea of on or your face. And what that means is you're wearing effectively, it's maintaining your composure, maintaining the civility that's expected of Rokugan samurai. Um, when you unmask, that means you lose your composure. And what it causes you to do is lose half of your strife. So you get the benefit of getting rid of it. And you also get a chance to do, um, you, it, you do something advantageous. So you can think of a way of like blurting out something that you wanted to, that you would otherwise not be able to say or do something that you would otherwise not be able to do. You know, it's the dramatic moment where the samurai kind of like gets up and like knocks a table over or something like that. <laughs> and the way you guys lose <clears throat> your, uh, the way you guys act when you are encouraged to act when you unmask is listed in your character sheet. So like when, Masako, when you unmask, when you uh, your reaction exceeds your composure, you angrily call out challenges to foes for combat. Yeah. And for you, Aki, you withdraw into quiet contemplation. Typical mm. of the Phoenix. Although yes. your composure is way lower than Masako's, which is hilarious. <laughs> Not cool-headed. Okay. So you do succeed. You upend Masako. You upend this this cart, and rah, you get it up and away. And um, as you do, the um, peasant is very very happy, uh, and he says, uh, he, "Yeah." Bends down and he gathers his things. I says, "Thank you so, thank you, thank you so much, samurai. Uh, the your your clan. Uh, you do your clan a great service." And I pass him back the letter. This is clearly not mine. Ooh, interesting. Uh, and so, brother in law should become a better father someday, hopefully. And he, his face kind of blushes a bit, and he, he quickly snatches the letter from you and places it away and says, Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, so he, once he sort of writes the cart, uh, you guys are pretty much free to, to carry on if you, uh, if you want. What's in this cart? Um, so the cart seems to be, uh, seems to have a, a bunch of, um, like possessions. It's as if someone was moving, but what you can see is that the possessions are like, they are way nicer than what a, a peasant would be traveling around with. This guy uh, has, let me see here. Yeah, there's certainly, oh, there's actually a crest in there that, uh, let's see here, who would recognize this? You know what, guys? Let's let's do some more rolling. What, what the fuck? Um, so I want to know whether you would recognize this thing. So I think what it would be culture is oh. yeah, probably. It's, so it's a um, I think it's a scholar culture or government, whichever one is you guys are better at. I'm uh, I'm fine with. I'll go with government. Government, okay. And uh, let me clear the dice out here. Okay, I so have two, you two skill in government. Two skill in government. Okay, so we'll start with uh, two skill. Boom. Oopsies, where are you going? No, wrong thing. Oop. Showing my folks off. And I'll try <laughs> to be more uh, rounded. Okay, so like describe this, you know. describe how you think that's going to happen. Um, so knowing that the, my recent little outburst caused a bit of uh, strife and, and did not help us get the wagon overturned, um, I'm going to refocus uh, and try to be steady and grounded when I speak to this this man. Uh, when I look at the uh, the the uh, what do you call it? The mark? No. The mon. The mon. Um, and think back to the teachings of my masters. Okay. Mm. So you you try and uh, you realize you are not some hot headed Matsu. You are Nakoto. So let's see here. Nice dice roller. All right. So 
you've got let's see here a bunch of dice so you get to pick three up sorry you get to pick up to three of them to be your dice so so i can skip the ones with strife and go with the next success and an advantage absolutely yeah okay i'll do that okay skip so just strife. one one success and one advantage yeah okay so what you recognize is that um, the mark that's on here is actually the mark of the Emerald Champion. Now, recently deceased Emerald Champion? That would be the recently deceased Emerald Champion's logo. There is only one Emerald Champion at a time. And I think with the advantage... Um, well, that's about... Yeah, I mean, like you as the player have put that two, uh, two and two together. I think you as the character... Um, you maybe recognize that the way that this guy kind of handles himself, uh, is a, as it's clear, he's cared for this stuff for a while. Uh, Steve, would you like to make a role as well? Yeah, sure. Okay. So it would be a either culture or government. Hmm. You culture, you've got one skill. So describe for me what approach you would use. Mm. I say I put this the right way up here and still have it on camera. Actually, that's harder to hold. Sorry. Yeah, you're sideways uh, samurai there. So looking at the different descriptors, would you say it's uh, graceful and grounded? Would you say it's direct, ferocious? Is it inventive? Hmm. Uh, the different approaches. Uh, what about water? Sort of perceptive. Sensitive? Yep, perceptive. I buy perceptive. So let's yeah. add two dice in there to uh, so two a bill a ring dice, and then boom. Oh, interesting. All right, so you can use up. You can keep up to two of those dice, and mm -hmm. if you keep this one, then you yeah. get to roll another one and add to the results. So you would get one success from that, one strife, and you could roll another skill dice. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. So which other? Do you want to keep the like what the success as well? Uh, I guess we'll keep the success sense. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what you get here. Uh, actually, I'll just look at it and hit the roll. Boom. Yeah, that, that, and. How do you do them? Okay, and you got it. Sorry, I, there's there is a way to make it roll. I don't remember what it is. Okay, so you get one. Oh, and let me keep that as well too. Oh, shit. Boom. 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 Okay. Nice. One success, one advantage, and one strife. Two success. Is that right? Yeah. Two success, one advantage, one strife. So. I think what happens, Steve, with with two advantages or two successes, you actually e e like look at this guy and you recognize that this must be the servant to the now deceased uh, Emerald um, uh, Emerald Champion Doji Satsumi, mm. and I think you, yeah, you might recognize that uh, you you didn't see that that note, but you did hear. Uh, Masako refer to his brother-in-law and of course you're thinking yeah um, so the emerald champion Doji Satsumi he, he must be bringing his personal effects to his brother-in-law Doji uh, Toshimoko because Toshimoko-sama is the head of the Kikita Dueling Academy the Dueling Academy you're heading to well perhaps I shall mention this and uh, ask them if they would like to join us on our journey. Sure. Well, so so what do you say? I say, oh, uh, condolences uh, to the passing of your master, I say intuitively. Okay, he turns around and looks at you, and he says, you, you knew. I inferred. Oh. <sighs> Your clan is as wise as they say. And he, he bows to you very deeply. Uh, 
how how is your clan after the passing of, of your champion uh he gets a, a look of extreme sorrow on his face and he says it uh the loss of my master uh was a great uh loss uh it was a, a tragedy felt by by many and so soon and so sudden um my master was so full of life and so vivacious his his loss i'm sorry uh samurai ko uh, and he gets down on his knees and, and bows in low he says my name is ryu i was the honored uh, i was honored to be the servant of doji satsumi now past i bring his personal effects to toshimoko sama I would be honored if you would accompany me. And I apologize a thousand times for the delay, which my foolishness caused. I, and he seems like he's about to tell you a story and then sort of trails off. <laughs> okay. Ah, worry not about delay. We, the, this allows us to and travel with uh, the effects and the former servant of uh, the Emerald Champion, past Emerald Champion. This is, we are heading to the tournament ourselves. So this is uh, perhaps good karma for all. You are traveling to participate in the Topaz Championship. Correct. Ah. I will win much honor for my clan. I see. That's well. Uh, if you show half of the uh, vitality which you demonstrated today, Samurai Ko, uh, you will no doubt uh, prove both yourself or do both yourself and your clan honor and find glory at the tournament. And she bows well low again. Have you been to Suma before? I don't think either of you guys have. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he no, gets a bit of a smile and he says, honored samurai. I spent my youth in this lovely village. It's home to the famous Kikita dueling Academy, of course. The samurai yes. who study there are unmatched in their skill with the blade. And he kind of realizes what he said and then looks at, at you, uh, Masako, and says, in the art of duel, of course. Of course. Um, may I also uh, humbly suggest the Red Lotus Tea House if you are of a mind to take your ease? Or were you looking for something else? Uh, perhaps a place quiet contemplation to meditate and keep the fires from coming to the surface. Ah, you will find many places of quite uh, quiet uh, serenity and contemplation. Um, I take it you have that. And he's, he, this, at this point, you guys are kind of like walking along and dragging the, you know, cart. Uh, he's dragging the cart behind him and you're talking and he's as you're walking along too like it is just a, a scene out of like a kurosawa film like there are beautiful twisting you know trees that that uh, grow out and naturally sort of provide this canopy uh but have just enough space in them to allow some light to dapple down between it too there's light um you know uh, there is a, a vast variety of flowers and uh blossoms that are blooming uh, almost as if the Gardeners, you know, having uh, hundreds of generations of uh, instruction have mastered the timing of the blooms to appear just as you are arriving for the Topaz Championship. Uh, I think, uh, uh, Aki, you likely recognize that this is uh, a, a fine work of, um, of cultivation or horticulture. And uh, Masako, you may see this as more prideful showmanship on the part of the crane. Definitely frivolous. You couldn't march two horses abreast to to, to travel down this path. And uh, he, the uh, Ryu kind of uh, laughs and, or smiles and says, "It's been. Uh, I'm not sure that since the time of uh, the founding of the empire that a, uh, an army has marched through here, uh, Samurai Ko. So um, he uh, mentions, he just, you know, a couple of the different places that you could go in town and relax and, and whatever. And then, um, yeah, but it, it sounds like that during the Topaz Championship, you can expect the 
village uh, to be very, very busy as well, too. People from all over the the empire are coming in. So our well, sign, our, our scene kind of ends with you guys walking along with uh, Ryu, you know, towards Suma, and we then cut uh, to the village of Suma itself. Uh, the village, unless there's anything else you guys want to ask or, or, you know, discuss with uh, Ryu. Just want to wish him peace in his journey. Uh, he uh, thanks you for that. So uh, we cut now to the scene at the village of Suma. So the village of Suma buzzes with activity today as peasants and samurai move about the streets on their business. The peasants all bow and wait for you to pass while the samurai rush by you without a second glance. Without a second glance, forgive me. Streamers are affixed to the trees. Paper lanterns in the colors of the great clans hang from posts. Carp kites fly in the air and glass chimes sing in the breeze, all welcoming contestants, observers, and other visitors to this year's Topaz Championship. You quickly make your way to the town magistrate's estate to formally register for the tournament. Then you're directed to the House of the Laughing Carp, the tea house and inn housing the contestants. As you step into the courtyard of the inn, a loud voice catches your attention. This is unacceptable! bellows a lean, tall young man, still dusty from the road. His sea-green attire and unfamiliar family crest mark him as a samurai of a minor clan. The samurai is in mid-argument with the innkeeper, an utterly implacable peasant woman. Forgive me, honorable samurai, she says very dryly. All my rooms are spoken for. If I should give you a room, I must displace another samurai who made these arrangements in advance. Perhaps you could try another boarding house in the village. They're all full, hisses the, the samurai hisses, struggling to regain his composure. The innkeeper notices your arrival and quickly turns to you and bows. Honored guests, she says, apparently recognizing you by your clan crests, your rooms are waiting. What are you guys going to do? <laughs> uh, I know my first thought was I'm just trying to figure out if it's right with my character okay so this guy is in, in Rokugan there are the seven major clans there are also a ton of other minor clans uh, like the Mantis clan, the Centipede clan, the Fox clan the um, Boar clan um, what these are Falcon, Wasp uh, all of these clans are basically like uh, they're usually either um, Ronin, uh, like wave men who have been elevated by the emperor at, or like their founder was elevated by the emperor at some point, it became a, a minor house, uh, or they are, um, splinters from the, one of the major clans, someone who performed with some kind of distinction or something, or did something to merit the creation of its own clan. So what do you guys want to do? Uh, you do recognize that this situation is on the edge. Um, mm. The clan, uh, the samurai from the minor clan, is uh, on the cusp of an unacceptable outburst, one that could cost him considerably in terms of his honor and social standing. Uh, being dismissed by a peasant is uh, both a, is an insult to that same honor, though, and being forced to sleep in the rough of Suma will likely not help this poor guy's chances uh, because to have traveled so far to this village at this time, he, it's clear he intends to participate in the village. So what do you guys want to do? Uh, do we have separate rooms? You do, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I, I will uh, step past the uh, other samurai and uh, acknowledge the innkeeper and thank, thank you for holding my room and not giving it away to someone who had not booked ahead of time. I appreciate you honoring our agreement and our uh, preparations. Is there not something you can do for um, said fellow? Okay. Samurai Co. So, our, so what this sounds to me is that this is going to be a courtesy and water. You are trying to be flexible, trying to get her to move her position. So mm -hmm. let's set your dice here. So what is your water ring? 
Three. Three. One sec here. Okay. That character doesn't sound very hot tempered. <laughs> She's like steady, grounded, thorough, balanced, flexible, and perceptive. No, and like, and they it's really. Earth and water. Okay. And what is your courtesy? Courtesy. Uh, social? Zero. Zero. Okay. So that means you keeping all these or up to all these. Boom. Oh, we yeah. got a success and some yeah, blurriness. Here, so it'll get bigger. You go, come on, camera, work with me. Okay. Um, so up to one success, one advantage. advantage. Oh, two successes, actually. Oh, okay. and that one's potentially exploding, too. Expl exploding success with strife? Yep. I'll take the um, exploding so, success. So, oh, let me explain one more thing here, too. Sorry, this is... Uh, so. The target number in this is basically how many successes you need to get. And I will tell you the target number is a two. Okay. So I needed the success and the exploding success with the strife. I'll skip the advantage for now. Skip the, okay. So let's... Uh... Oh, I see. Hold on. Huh. This is what I got to do. Okay. I'll let you see. Here's the exploding. Ready? One, two. Come on, camera. Work with me. Do, 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 do. Okay. Kabam. Boom. There we go. And boom. Nice. Ooh. Oh, got advantage anyways. Yeah, nice. So you got uh, boom, boom, boom. Two successes, one advantage, one strife. So your strife is now a two. All right. So what is it you say? So do you sort of like flash a smile to this woman or? Hmm. I give her a slightly deeper bow than she's due given her station. Love it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and just speak in a nice, calm, quiet tone, asking her if there's anything that she can do to help this otherwise you know, homeless <laughs> samurai from a minor clan. What you can spend advantage on is to reduce the amount of strife you gain, if you like. Hmm. Hmm. So you could, uh, did you want to reduce the strife from, uh, from that check? I will. Um, Are you okay with riding some strife right now? I'll, I'll okay with the strife for now. I got okay. lots of I'll be meditating later. Okay. So you say that and she, um, she kind of looks at you and is, you tell me, how do you think she, like, she's going to uh, acquiesce to this. How do you think she reacts to your, is it that you are being like formal enough? Are you applying? Is it, do you think your station that she's applying to, or is it your sincerity? I think it's more of the sincerity and that I've helped, uh, you know, interceding when a situation was getting out of control and the, he, he looked like he was going to blow his top. Okay. So it's more like, you know, is there any way you can help? You know, I, maybe a storeroom that you could, uh, you know, clear some space or. She kind of looks at you and, um, you know, is uh, shiftedly kind of moving her eyes between you and uh, the samurai, the um, Phoenix Shugenja, uh, who stands next to you, and this minor clan samurai, and says, "Perhaps I should check my list." And she, you know, goes over. Uh, the tall, lean, uh, young samurai is standing there, still kind of fuming and trying to get his emotions under control. And in comparison, you are just a placid pond. So you kind of look over and then she comes back and she's looking through her list. And then she shows you and you can see that, um, well, first she says, and, uh, samurai, what is your name? And the man sort of, uh, you know, gr through gritted teeth says Hitoshi. And she looks at the list and shows you that Hitoshi's name was placed on the list at the same time as all of the other contestant attendees, but it was since removed. And she actually seems a little surprised to discover this. Hmm. Now, unfortunately, this does not magically create a room. No. But it does diffuse the situation and lets you... Su so what you could do now is you guys uh, could suggest another course of action without having to make a check. So how do you think you would resolve this that would uh, placate this guy? I look to uh, my companion. Uh, scroll back to the names. Aki? Uh, yes. 
Aki, um, would it be possible for us to help accommodate? It seems Hitoshi's name was moved from the list after being placed there. Uh, hmm. Perhaps there's uh, some error here, and I don't want to cause uh, dishonor to this. Um, could we room together? And I can give my room up to the other samurai. Hmm. That is, uh, that's very considerate of you. I mean, uh, I don't have a problem with that. Hitoshi's eyes get kind of, he's a little taken aback and, and, uh, and looking, you know, looking back and forth between you guys, like he's, he's genuinely shocked at the kindness that you're showing to him. Hmm. Is he cute? Maybe Take I want to see him too. <laughs> My character is like, I am up. What's he look like? <laughs> He he is actually like he is definitely a, a little bit of a uh, you know diamond in the rough, but he is actually a, a quite attractive young man. <laughs> hmm. Well, perhaps we could dine together. Speak to the innkeeper and and I'll let her know uh, that uh, I will room with my traveling companion and uh, give my room up to uh, Hitoshi so that he's not stricken from the list in both on pa in both paper and in, in real life. Okay. Great. So she, uh, he, he sort of looks at both of you and the, and the innkeeper says that will be fine. That will be fine. Um, and she looks, she says, forgive me, Samurai. And she bows to Hitoshi. She says, I have your room. Uh, allow me to fetch the, um, uh, it wouldn't be keys. Allow me to fetch your, I don't know, something. <laughs> <laughs> your wooden toggle. Your wooden yeah. toggle. It wouldn't toggle. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he Hitoshi turns to you guys and he, uh, he kind of like you know has com he's finding himself where he's, he's uh, so gobsmacked by your kindness that he turns to you both and then bows very very deeply and uh, sa introduces himself in a, a fairly crisp you know uh, manner, uh, which is a little surprising for someone coming from um obviously from one of the you know uh the minor clans and the, and the less prestigious uh families and he says my name is hitoshi uh from the mantis clan oh sorry of the mantis clan well that perhaps next time you come upon a situation such as this you might react differently um see how things turned out this time perhaps kindness might be a better option um his, his face flushes a bit um and he can't tell if it's embarrassment or anger but he doesn't lose his his composure again he says uh sage <laughs> advice uh, samurai ko or koto sama uh before the tournament uh incidentally he so when you refer to someone who is of the same station as you, you can add son at the end to give a, an indication of like friendship or like not familiarity in a rude kind of way, but like uh, friend uh, friendliness. So if you Hito add sama, Hitoshi sorry, Hama? if you Hitoshi add son. sama, it's indicating that y the person is of greater station than you, and he has referred to you as Okoto sama. Okay, so which then, is appropriate because the. Uh, He's their, from a lesser their, clan. Their family has lesser station than what uh, you guys do. Okay. So, um, is there a, something to add to his name to acknowledge the fact that he's technically not our peer? Um, you you could uh, you could fi be fine calling him San. San. Okay. Yeah. Hitoshi San, you're for Topaz Championship. I am. I have traveled from the islands of spice and silk to participate. Uh, very well. And you have come from the lion lands. Indeed, indeed, we have. Oh, I have. Sorry, my companion here. I'm uh, much farther away. Right, Aki. Mm -hmm. Aki-san. Indeed, we have traveled far. And we are weary. He turns to you, Aki, and he says, I have been to the ports of your fa of your clan. Your people oh. are inter intriguing. Hmm. I, I, I bow. You honor us. 
So um, what do you guys want to do then? I mean, uh, unless there's anything else you wish to achieve here. I would look to see if there's a place that we could sit down and eat before we go to our rooms or yeah. after. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys uh, can enjoy it's a, in here. You could, uh, this is, um, an in and tea house. So you certainly could get, uh, a meal in here. There are probably travelers from all over too, from all the seven clans. You see, there are wild, bald, tattooed, you know, men and women from the dragon lands. There are, um, savage looking, um, uh, samurai and samurai co from wearing, uh, natural leathers and, and, uh, purple dyed um, tunics uh, coming from the unicorn clan. There are tall, brutal looking uh, samurai ko and samurai who you would guess from their dark blue armor come from the crab lands. And there are of course one or two dressed in light pale blue that you would guess or identify because of their long flowing white hair or from the Crane Clan. Now sit, sit not close enough to them that their cowardice might rub off. Yes. So what you see is that there are a number of other uh, contestants that are in here. I have forgotten, of course, uh, one clan, which is my personal favorite. <laughs> you see sitting in the corner, wearing dark... Uh, almost like maroon robes with red accents and wearing a, sh a lacquered mask. There's clearly a member of the Scorpion clan. Dun, dun, dun. The Scorpion clan is widely known to be the most dishonorable, the most deceptive, and the most uh, cunning of all clans where the crane represent the best and most honorable, the scorpion, the most deceptive and treacherous sitting in here. However, you do see there is over the course of, uh, the evening, are you guys kind of mixing in, you know, um, mixing so in like, with the uh, other yeah, folks? Like, they're probably like long tables where you just slide in. Yeah. Alongside others. Yeah. So uh, over the course of the, the evening, you meet a couple other or a few other contestants. There is a um, another actually member of the Phoenix clan, uh, Aki, a guy named Shiba Toya. Now, he is actually a oh. Bushi. He is a, uh, not a Shigenja, he's a uh, warrior. Uh, tall and grave, his face stretched in a perpetual frown. He is confident in his abilities and more interested in learning from the other competitors than in showing off or even winning the tournament. He describes to you how he is extremely proficient with the Yari or the spear. Uh, there is a dragon uh, samurai as well, or Bushi as well, named uh, Miramoto Hinata. Uh, Hinata is broad shouldered and broad face with rough feet with the rough features of a farmer. She carries now all once uh, someone is called to the samurai uh, station, uh, they are entitled to wear the Daisho. And the Daisho is the paired swords, the Wakazashi and the Katana. The Katana is the soul of the samurai. The Wakazashi is this mark of station. Uh, even Shugenja carry a Wakazashi or short sword. And the reason they do is because if your lord commands you to take your life, it will be with your Wakazashi. The Wakazashi is normally an accessory really for most clans. And for Bushi, the katana is the soul of the samurai, the single weapon. The um, dragon, however, particularly the dragon who study at the Miramoto Dueling School, or they wield both. It's a style called Niten, and it's the two-sword technique, completely unorthodox and completely bizarre. Mm. Um, but she is there. But there. later becomes the way of the sword. Yes. <laughs> The, uh, there are a number of other uh, samurai. There's a scorpion bushi. There's a crab courtier. There's a unicorn bushi, a lion shugenja, another member of your clan, Masako, and a crane bushi. Uh, do you think of, there's anything in particular you kind of want to achieve in that first night 
of uh, getting to know people and relaxing. Well, given how uh, how Masako is looking for personal glory in the tournament, she's going to try and size up some of the seemingly better opponents and sure. talk to uh, talk to some individuals about you know how they choose to fight and how long they've been training and who their masters are and see what she can uh, glean from them. Sure. So you meet with then the Bushi, I guess. So you meet with, uh, there's a uh, female, another female uh, Bushi from the Crane clan. She dyes half her hair white and then leaves the, uh, the re- and then weaves the result into a striking black and white braid. She is confident that she, as a student of the Kakita Dueling Academy, will easily win the tournament. She may be right. Riku is, uh, she's not staying at the laughing carp. She's actually staying at the dueling Academy, but she has come out just to sort of, you know, press the flesh and play a bit of mind games with the competitors. Given your opinion of the crane clan, I'm guessing that you find her somewhat insufferable. (laughs) They all think they're going to win until they're lying on their back. The Mm. Hitoshi himself, uh, seems, uh, a little, like I said, tall, lean, actually fairly attractive. Um, but you find that actually he's not quite sure why he was offered a position in the Topaz Championship. He's, he describes himself as being capable with a bow um, and that uh, he has served on a number of uh, Mantis ships, uh, including the Fortunate Turtle and the Susano O. But he did not, he was invited to participate in this. He did not. A, you know, attend a choose to attend on his own. Um, mm. There is a unicorn bushi named Moto Batbayar. And his name has a very Gaijin uh, kind of sound quality to it, which is not uncommon amongst the unicorn. The uh, Batbayar's uh, quick smile, dark skin, and curly hair makes oh, so it's a woman uh, makes her seem like a Gaijin even more than her fur lined leather vest. She regards her, this entire experience as a fascinating chance to learn more about the empire. She's probably just bubbling over with curiosity about where you guys have been and what you guys have seen. And then, of course, you met Bayushi Mai, sorry, Bayushi Mei Lin. And Mei Lin is a female scorpion bushi. She wears a red mask covering the left side of her face. And she seems very antisocial. Uh, she does not, you maybe like chit chat with her for a little bit, but then she very quickly sort of cuts, you know, cuts your, um, cuts your conversations short. What is your, who, which of you two guys has a higher water ring? At uh, uh, two, three. Masako, you realize that this is perhaps a tactic. She is, while she is not engaging with anyone, you can see that one eye that's not concealed behind the uh, mask is darting about the room. She is studying her opponents as one would do before striking in a duel. Hmm. I make sure to uh, sip from my cup with my offhand and deliberately feed uh, misinformation on my body movement. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that is so awesome. Yeah, that is fucking oh. great. Assuming she hasn't already observed me, because if she's already observed me, then she would know that I'm. No, I think you guys, well, you could absolutely, you know, when, when, um, I think you guys could have have noticed that, and uh, that that's fucking cool. Um, what about you, Aki? What are you doing for the evening? Um, <clears throat> well, maybe I will uh, sit and chat with uh, Hitoshi a little bit. Uh, sure. Yeah. You know. So he is, you find that again, like he, he's a nice kid. Like he, he's an, yeah. he's uh he's a little younger than what he looks mm. and like he, he's tall and lean and um, his, his upbringing is so wild compared to what your experience is because the Mantis uh, clan are a clan of sailors and they are said to the ports right. of the, of um, the Mantis and to a degree, the Kasuga, the uh, Tortoise clan, are said to actually have people from outside the Empire visit. 
So the wild Gaijin travelers and merchants that uh, they meet with, um, mm -hmm. he's got phenomenal stories, like just things you, you, you've seen uh, wonders in the Phoenix lands, but the tales he tells and the stories he passes on from uh, like the sailors, tales of the Nino uh, living beneath the waves, tales of the mighty Orochi, the giant massive dragon of the deep, and even legends of the sleeping Naga. Ooh, my goodness. He's very interesting for a young man. St uh, sailors have very little to do other than tell tall tales. So <laughs> he is full of them. So otherwise the evening passes guys pretty, um, pretty, uh, you know, um, pleasantly. We might be the two prettiest women in the place. Just say there's that too. Yes, Probably. absolutely. I'm sure there's lots of attention coming our way and we'll just brush it off and yeah. you know, we have <laughs> things, things to do. <laughs> so, um, you guys retire and, uh, the innkeeper has provided a second, uh, like sleeping mat for you and the little like square pillow thing. And, uh, after, uh, you know, the full day of travel and a full evening of socializing, you guys find it, uh, find very little difficulty in, um, falling asleep. And then you awaken with no clear sense of why and find that light is shining in the courtyard outside the paper screen door of your room. Hey, Jeff, both... uh, Steve might have missed all that. He was away from his... Uh... Oh, sorry, Steve. Did you hear any of that? Uh, so, so we woke up uh, unexpectedly? Yes, that's right. You woke up. Uh, you don't know why. And you can see that light is shining in the courtyard outside the paper screen door of your room. Hmm. What do you guys want to do? Uh, we're we're both awake. You, yeah, you look and you, you both look at each other and realize this is unusual. Uh, well, the first thing any proper warrior does is ensure that they're not unarmed. So I will grab my swords and then... So you, the, there is a small stand that your, uh, your swords are on. You grab them and tie, tie the dice show. Now, you actually don't have... A uh, proper, uh, a proper katana so, or wakizashi. You have a bowken, a yeah, wooden training sword. We haven't gotten our ceremony yet. No. So you you tie, but that said, I mean, like you are a so a um, student of the Okoto school. This bowken in your hand is no fucking joke. It's not the you know, foot and a half long or three foot long razor blade that you will be awarded when you become a, you complete your uh, Gampuku ceremony, but you are absolutely uh, a very, very dangerous uh, opponent with this thing. Mm -hmm. So you grab your, your Boken um, and you, I guess, get your staff, Aki. And yep. you make your way yep. to the door. Sliding the shoji screen aside, you find a stern-faced old man kneeling by a formal tea set at a low table in the center of the courtyard. Moonlight shimmers on his blue and emerald silk kimono as he gestures for you to join him. Sit by me, he says. We go I bow. I bow and go and step down slowly and with uh, practice steps. Okay, and you make your way over. As you, you kneel down at the small table and study the ornate and beautiful tea set that sits before you, there are two cups in front of each of you, or one in front of each of you, and there is one in front of him. Then he smiles. Who will pour the tea? And you realize with a shock that this is Doji Satsumi, the dead Emerald Champion. Whoa. It appears he wants to perform a tea ceremony. And it may not be wise to argue with a ghost. Now, a tea ceremony, for, for, forgive me if I'm telling you stuff you guys already know, is a very precise and ritual um, mm. and spiritual uh, ceremony that or ritual that sh both shows serenity and oneness with the void. 
So what mechanically this will be is a performance uh, check um, with the void ring. Mm, Who would ooh. like to pour the tea? Or perform void. the ceremony, I should say. I, my void is too. Mine is as well. Um, Paco has done this, but not for a ghost before, and not <laughs> for a recently <laughs> recent champion, um, an Emerald Champion. So it's a little awkward, but uh, she'll try to. You got lots of control. Look, yeah, look, I'm looking to Aki, and Aki is not stepping forward, so she's gonna <laughs> give it a shot. Okay. So what is your performance? Uh, oh, zero. zilch. Zilch, we got two. All right. So let's see what happens. Here we go. Oh, and before we roll, I will point out, if you can think of a narrative hook for your advantage, you could do this. Like, for instance, your sixth sense. You're especially in tune with the spirit world and especially sensitive to mystical phenomenon there, Steve. Mm -hmm. So Seems pretty if, mystical. If Never what you what that allows you to do is to re-roll up to two dice of your choice. Ooh. So if you wanted to perform the tea ceremony, you could roll and then re-roll one or two of the dice if you don't like the results. <clears throat> hmm. Feel free to interrupt anytime, Steve, because um, I might have indomitable will, but uh, right. I'm, not so, I'm not so mystical. <laughs> no, not I'm going to pour the fuck out of this tea. <laughs> okay. over and over again until i get it right very well i will uh, i will channel my spiritual powers and uh, step in and say may i have this dance okay so you can see that masako is is you know be beginning to raise her hands to um to grab the tea and you sense that there is some uncertainty uh with her mm -hmm. aki and even though aki you don't have uh, it doesn't seem that you are trained in this. You you try to sort of read what the ghost of Doji Satsume wants of you. And let's see here. Boom. All right. So you got one advantage and no success, but you can re-roll up to two dice. Do you want to re-roll the blank one or do you want to re-roll both of them? Uh, hmm. That's an interesting question. Um, mm -hmm. I think that uh, that's an advantage story, right? It is, yeah. Yeah. Advantage isn't bad, but... Uh, but it's not man. a success, though. It's not a success, though. That's right. Okay, let's roll them both. Here we go. Okay, and, and boom. There we go. What's hey! That? One oh. success, one strife, one advantage. Okay. Now, remember, you can use advantage to cancel strife if you want. Oh, um, what else would I do with it? Um, uh, you can also use it like you can in, let me tell you here. I'll, uh, you can absorb it and then, you know, just flip out later. Uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, here, see, this is kind of cool. Name air, earth, fire, or water. If your check uses, if your next check uses that ring, reduce its target number by one. Hmm. Hmm. But I, so I don't know what the next check is going to be, obviously. You don't know, no. Or okay. you could hear another one, Void, with uh, an advantage from Void. You could gain some spiritual insight into the nature of the universe or of your own heart. So you could learn something about yourself or about something else supernatural. Oh, interesting. Let's, let's do that. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you grab the... Yeah, uh, or not grab, but you like you carefully uh, take the you know tea and you and you rotate it and you pick it up in the precise way. I have put no levels in my tea ceremony, so I'm just going to describe it in vague details. <laughs> but you can picture that while the soft moonlight um, shines down on you guys, uh, Aki, you reach forward and grab the. Uh, what do you call it? Grab the tea and you correctly pour it for yourself. Sorry, for Satsume sama, for um, Masako san, and for yourself. And then you place the tea 
back in the, the pot, I should say, back in the proper spot. You go back and rest your hands on the on your lap. You can see a so the subtlest hint of a smile crosses the ghost's face. Mm. Clearly pleased at what you have done. He reaches forward <laughs> and well done, uh, you all drink the tea. Is it real tea? Like can just, oh yeah, it's actual tea. So that's the that's the part that's kind of creeping out uh, my character. And so yeah. here's what you know, Steve. What I'll do is I'll give you this. Um, you know that ghosts are the spirits of ancestors, unable for some reason to move on to the afterlife of Yomi or Meido. Helping the ghost resolve its unfinished business can help it pass on to its next place among the ancestors. They also, you also remember that ghosts are traditionally at least a little cryptic and there is likely more to the story than Satsumi's shade may let on. So what do you guys want to say? You're sitting with a ghost. You know that you've met Ryu on the day before or that, uh, the day before he does not seem intent on commencing conversation, but he certainly seems um, content to discuss it with you. He wants to chat, fair enough. Hmm. Um, hello, honorable spirit. Please tell me, are you satisfied with your performance at, at in combat at the championship? He looks, he says, you mean, you know who I am? Oh, yes. We were actually traveling with your servants today. With Ryu. How is Ryu? He seems very well. That is good. He served me loyally for years, from the time of the first Emerald Championship, in fact. He was very sad at your passing. Aye. And I am sad to have left. But such as um, it was not my karma to remain. He takes and sips the tea. Rumors, great champion. Um, demise was perhaps unnatural or untimely. Any of this true? Demise? But if I'm dead, and he sips, then who is enjoying this wonderful tea? <laughs> he smells it. Ah, a lovely brew. Yes. Um, we, we were told of your demise. The whole nation is in turmoil. Uh, turmoil. It is a troublesome time for the Empire. He gets a little bit of a more serious look. One thing you also know, Steve, from your void ghosts in, in addition to their um their secrets uh or rather their um cryptic nature they often want something of the living ah, i see <laughs> so what brings you here noble spirit he says, ah, I have a task for you, of course, and for you, Lion San. And takes a sip of the tea. What is this task you have for us? I want you to ensure that Hitoshi, the young mantis, survives the Topaz Championship. I want to see that he becomes a samurai worthy of his father. Hitoshi-san, we, we, we met him today. That it's same fortuitous. small smile kind of turns up the corner of his mouth. Really? Fortuitous. Um, I may have given up my room to him so that he might not have to be sleeping in a field or... 
this is strange that this is all happening t today and tonight. I. She gets a bit of a shiver. She's like, okay, this is kind of creepy and weird. I don't deal with this kind of stuff. He smiles and says, the fallen, the fallen blossom can never return to the bow, yet all can see from whence it came. Now, do you recommend that he not compete in competition? Oh, no. He must compete. If he wishes to become a samurai worthy of his father, he must compete. Well, we cannot do anything dishonorable. No. no. Perhaps we can watch his... Right, and uh, I'm not as good at archery as he probably will be, so I don't know what to do there, but you can... Hitoshi, you think more like a scorpion than a lion, young samurai ko. I don't wish for Hitoshi, I don't wish for you to help him win the Topaz Championship. I wish for you to help him survive. We can certainly do our best for that. Well, you have my thanks. May Lady Doji favor you with eloquence and courage in your task. And he finishes his tea. And... As he places the tea down, he looks up and says, then I have your promise. My promise? I promise as a lion. My word is my bond. And you, young Shugenjiko? I bow. I, I will do what I can. Hmm. He smiles. Good. And in a blink, you guys see that your visitor is gone. And you see the tea set is still sitting before you. But when you touch it, it's cold. And the teacup belonging to your guest still sits undisturbed and dry on the tray. Uh, uh, Aki, what just happened here? Aki san. Uh, I, am, <laughs> I am a Shugenja and I study the ways of magic, but uh, this, this. I don't understand. This, this, this is part of the spiritual dimension. Let's, um, um, oh, here we that, go. So, was that really the ghost Steve, of Doji said to me? What you could do, I'm looking at your under scholar, you actually have a skill called theology that you've got a, a shit ton of levels in. Well, look at that. So, I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you think that you are being centered, flexible, ferocious? grounded or cunning in your approach to to remember this. I think it, hmm. centered, flexible, ferocious, cunning or grounded. Yeah. Give me a sec here. I got I'm going to look in the actual core book because there's actually it's neat in the core rule book they actually give you recommendations for how each of those specifically uh, each of those approaches specifically play out with the right. different uh, skills. So let me just see if I can get some insight here. Okay. Although I, my, my first thought is that because it's sort of unexpected, probably trying to be flexible. Uh, so uh, recalling uh, knowledge, mm. let's see here is Let's see here. So recall is the earth approach is to knowing facts about the doctrines or religious analyze is the air ring sense is the void ring theorize is guessing what supernatural forces might be at work, which would be fire. 
Hmm. Well, that's tried- about- let's rock that one. Yeah. Okay. So fire is what's your fire ring? Three. Holy shit. So you have three. Yikes. Uh, let's, let's go in here. So you have three skill dice and three ring dice, and you can keep three of these. Boom. Nice. Show me. No exploding Ooh. dice, mm. but you got, wow. So you keep no, three uh, of those. Oh, it's right there. Oh, wait. Oh, no, that's success. Okay. Um, so here, let me all yeah. keep talking here, Steve. Well, let, let, let's keep the success, the success, the success. Yep. And we'll take a we'll take a strife and an advantage. Strife and advantage. Okay. So success, success with advantage, success with strife. Nice. Okay. So with geez, that's a lot of successes. So what are your questions? What do you what are you as Steve, what are you what are you hoping to to learn here? Oh man. Uh, how, how are you gonna protect some guy from dying in the tournament? I mean, what the heck do I do there? Uh, okay. What you're you're theorizing about is the mm. particulars of about the ghost. So let me give you some some insight here. First, sure. a spirit like Doji Satsumi, mm. this is a legend in the clan. Like to become Emerald Champion is in basically you're like the most important magistrate in the empire. Uh, the mm. Whoa. Uh, Emerald Champion has underneath him or her a bunch of uh, Emerald magistrates, which are basically agents of the emperor who go about as law enforcers think of like Mm. you know and they're able to class or cross clan borders it's an incredibly important and influential position it's also Mm. a position of great respect and uh and honor so not Mm. only is this guy who is the not always deceased but he was the brother to the clan champion of the crane clan um it's also the fact that he had that that incredibly high station now when someone of that high station passes on the sort of, they still carry in a, a great degree, their name and their uh, honor and whatnot carries, carries on past that. It's weird that the ghost or the ancestor of a clan that to which neither of you belongs has come to you. You would expect that it would be your ancestors that would come to you. So the, that itself yeah. is strange. It's right. also strange that he would concern himself with what's going on with a mantis samurai, a samurai from a minor clan. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I know that. I was curious. Yeah. The mantis themselves were actually, uh, I'm not sure you necessarily, well, you rolled a lot of successes. So the mantis are actually descended from a crab clan samurai. They're uh, from, oh. you know, centuries and centuries ago. So there's not even like a legacy or a, a legacy of crane mixed in with the the mantis so that Mm. itself too it would it's not like it would be a latent ancestral appearance so that's unusual masako didn't you hear something about the brother-in-law in in that note i did yes um when the paper fell into my lap literally into my face um in law maybe getting an opportunity someday to be a father. So maybe there's not a direct connection, um, but maybe there's some illegitimate fatherhood connection. I don't know. Could be. Masako's thinking all sorts of crazy things now. She's not sure where to, where to draw draw <laughs> this in. There's Why two is this? unusual things I think that uh, you guys have recognized, or your characters would recognize about this as well. Obviously, so this ghost has shown up to request that you guys make sure uh, that Hitoshi gets through the Topaz Championship. But what did Hitoshi tell you about his invitation? He wasn't even sure why he's there. He was invited. Correct. Hmm. Who invited him? I think it was somebody who wished him well, wished him ill. And that's why the ghost is reaching out to try and protect him. Hmm. It sounds like the ghost knew his father. So somebody brought him here to do him harm. Maybe there's reason to try and protect him. 
What do you think, Aki? Does that make any sense? That is an interesting theory. Uh, now, first and foremost, there's like it's not like nobody survives a competition but the champion, right? Like other people. No, no, no. They're yeah. they're not. Uh, this the championship involves not. It's not just like people go in and whack each other with swords until they're done. There's mm -hmm. a bunch of different uh, tasks. The tasks include um, there is a sumai championship, like a, a you know wrestling effectively. There's heraldry, mm -hmm. athletics, horseback riding. Conduct, uh, composition, and um, hunting, archery, go, knowledge of law, and of course, poetry. No, no. So it is a samurai is no mere gladiator. A samurai is a cultured. Um, a person of cultured station, of course, so the, the, yeah. which makes you wonder why would Satsume be concerned about his safety? Well, we could either just obey this ghost's commands, or we could do a little bit of research and try to figure out what the connection is. Well, you will not really have time for that because you see, tomorrow mm -hmm. the Topaz Championship commences Ooh. Ooh. Hey. so something. You with do it. that you guys return to your room and you get a beautiful night's sleep which clears any strife that you may have accumulated yes <laughs> and what happens on the first day of the topaz championship we'll, we'll have to find session. out <laughs> At the next session, because we're out yeah. of time. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. So, for those listening at home, uh, thanks so much for joining us for our initial dabbling with the Legend of the Five Rings uh, role playing game published by Fantasy Flight Games. Um, we apologize for the, well, I apologize, I should say, for the kind of weird holding up the, the thing to, to roll dice uh, thing, but. I want to, there is really something special about watching dice roll and seeing the results yourself. So it was more interesting, I think, for the players uh, than you know me rolling dice and telling you guys what the result is. Um, but if you have any uh, comments, uh, questions, or concerns regarding the session, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below, and I will uh, endeavor to answer that in a timely fashion. Um, uh, also, you may notice that we have links in the description of this video to the Hero Save Villages campaign. This is the charity fundraising campaign we're running on the channel. Uh, uh, this is something where uh, at, we have paired up with the SOS Children's Villages International Charity. It is something that provides assistance, uh, direct assistance, and um, advocacy for children living in high need circumstances. Uh, if you want to learn more about the Hero Save Villages campaign specifically or the S uh, SOS Children's Villages, uh, then please feel free to click through the link. You can see that we've got a bunch of neat rewards available on there, including an opportunity to introduce a NPC to the campaign, uh, an opportunity for me to run a session for you. I've run one of those so far for um, the very generous George Straton and uh, his friends. Uh, and I've got another one coming up in uh, November, which will be fun, but uh, I still have a, a number of those available. So uh, I, it's all the money that's donated goes directly to the charity. None of it comes to, uh, to me or the channel or anything like that. Uh, it's just a, a way to try and encourage a donation. But of course, don't feel obligated. Uh, this is certainly uh, just a, an optional thing. And if you have enjoyed the channel and you enjoyed the video, uh, or this video, uh, I just ask that you consider clicking through and uh, making a donation. And finally, Thank you to Steve and to Dave for letting me indulge my flight of fancy tonight and play this game. I had so much fun going back to Rokugan. This is awesome. I love samurai stuff, man. No, I'm, I'm all, uh, you know I'm all about the Oriental adventures in D&D, &D, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, I know you'd be on board. <laughs> and Dave, I'm thrilled to hear that you're playing a samurai in the D&D campaign too, so that's awesome. I'm also reading the Book of Five Rings, the classic text on Japanese Way of the Sword by... Oh. Yep. Miyamoto Musashi. Musashi. Miyamoto yeah. Musashi. That's a great book. That's a yeah. great yeah, book. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually so where you, the game gets its name. Yeah. You, you yeah. actually just said something a couple minutes ago about, um, you know, because the samurai is not just about swordsmanship. And hit page 11, it says, the true science cannot be attained by just the mastery of swordsmanship alone. I was like, wow. 
Kevin, are you, you're, <laughs> like, you're like the embodiment of uh, Miyamoto Musashi. <laughs> Yes, that is absolutely what people think when they meet me. They're like, you are totally like a 16th century Japanese swordsman. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm the uh, least... Uh, well, anyway, uh, guys, again, thanks so much for uh, for playing this and trying this out tonight. I, I have had a shit ton of fun. Um, yeah, great. Yeah, so anyway, um, we're going to call it here, guys. So uh, for those listening at home, thanks again for joining us. I'll rename this video so it has the proper title on it. And we will see you all again very soon. See ya.